This is three videos series on single diode mixer design and its optimization using AWR Microwave Office. In this video, we are going to create the matching network between bias diode circuit and RF isolator circuit. And in the second section of this video, we are going to design the RF isolator circuit using Wilkinson power combiner. So let's get started. In the first step of this video, we are going to download the demo files using the link given in the description and open AWR design environment from your start menu. Then we'll go to file, open project, in my case, I've saved the file on desktop. Select the single diode mixer.emp file and click on open button. So if I'll recall it from previous tutorial, till here we have designed the DC bias circuit for a diode. In the next step, we are going to create the matching circuit for the diode's input port. To do that, first we are going to create a new schematic. So go back to your project panel, circuit schematic, right click, click on new schematic. I'm going to name it matching circuit and click over create button. Now here we are going to place the sub circuit block from the diodes bias circuit model. To do that, just click on this sub circuit block. Now from here, make sure you have selected the diode biasing and click on OK button. And next we are going to assign the ports to it. So first before designing the matching circuit, I just want to run the simulation for return loss. So from that we can able to visualize the ports are not matched to 50 ohm. I'll place another port here. Now to plot the S11 parameter, we need to create a new graph. But before that, I want to set the frequency for this project so that it will simulate for the input frequency, which is 4.25 gigahertz in our case, right? So instead of assigning the frequency uh, or a single point frequency to the entire project, I'm going to assign it for, a, for the schematic. So right click, go to options. Now here, we'll just uncheck this, use project defaults, click a single point, make it, 4.25 gigahertz and click on OK button. So now the frequency single point is set. Next, we are going to create the new graph. To do that, you'll simply click over this create or add new graph button. Now I'm going to name it, let's say S11 RF. Make sure it should be selected at Smith chart and click over create button. Now I'm going to add the measurement. To do that, we'll just simply right click here, go to add new measurement. From here, you have to go to linear, then port parameters, then make sure you've selected S here and source will be matching circuit. So let's select that. We are going to plot for S11, so it's also selected and we are going to plot for a complex number so that it will have some real and imaginary number. But from that, from a Smith chart, we can easily see if it will be not at the center line, then there will be some impedance mismatch. And we are going to tune that using a matching network. Click on OK and run analysis. So as you can see at 4.25 gigahertz, we have this location on a Smith chart. If I'm going to check the real and imaginary value on that, we can simply add marker. And we can clearly see the real part is 0 0.5338 and imaginary part is 0 0.418. Ideally, we want this point at the center line, then our input impedance will be matched to port impedance, which is 50 ohm, right? And input impedance, I'm talking about the input impedance of a diode bias circuit. So here we are going to use single stub matching technique to match the input port to diode circuit at 4.25 gigahertz create a single stub matching network. First, we are going to add the microstrip line in series to the input port of the sub circuit. Let's go back to our matching circuit schematic. Go to elements. From elements, we have to search for microstrip and from here, we we'll just select our line and search for mlin. So we'll just select this mlin, drag and drop here. We'll make some space, delete this connection and place it in series with the port. Now the microstrip line should have some sort of substrate definition, which should be exactly similar as your PCB. All right. To do that, I'm just going to define a global definition of the substrate. So we'll just go to global definition, double click here. And here we are going to add the substrate element. Again, go back to your element panel. Here you have to search for substrate. I'm just going to close it, search for substrate, select that and place M sub. All right, I'm going to zoom out a bit. Here we go. Now we are going to add the parameters of M sub. So I'll just double click here. Now ER in our case will be 2.2. Height of the substrate will be 0.787. Thickness of copper will be 35 micron. So it will be 0 0.035. And then tangent loss will be 0 0.0007. This will be 2.2 as well. And the name should be sub 1. 
we'll click on OK and here we go. Now we'll just save the project. Go back to project and go back to our schematic, which is matching circuit. Now here we have to assign the substrate to this microstrip transmission line. To do that, we'll just double click on that, click on M sub and from here, make sure you've selected sub one. So we have automatically assigned the properties from the substrate to this microstrip line. Next, we are going to define some variables. So let's say the width of the substrate will be the W50 ohm. So that will calculate using the transmission line tool. I'll show you later. And let's make the length another variable, which will be L line. And this is what we are going to tune. So we'll just set some initial value and later on we'll tune that. And similarly, we'll just place these variables here as an equation. Now, before doing that, I'm just going to calculate the value of the width using the substrate parameters. So we'll go to tool transmission line and here we are going to change the property. So make sure the dielectric constant should be 2.2. It's the same value which you have set for the substrate. The conductor should be copper frequency 4.25 gigahertz. Uh, yeah, impedance we are looking for 50 ohm. This doesn't matter. Height should be this. And the thickness we want is 0 0.035 mm. Make sure it should be selected as mm. So then this will be 0 0.035, all right? And then we'll calculate it. So the calculated width is 2.38 mm, all right? And if we'll do that for this substrate, we'll get the impedance of 50 ohm. So let's remember that. Now we are going to create the equations. So we'll just click on this equation button. Let's place it here. So W50 will be 2.38. Copy and paste. Next equation will be for the length of the line, which is L line. For now, I'm just making it 16.85 mm. Why so specific? That we'll see later. But this is a tunable parameter, which will tune to make sure that uh, the impedance or the input impedance of the diode bias circuit should be 50 ohm, all right? So for now, I'll just leave it 16.85. Next, we are going to add the stub next to this microstrip transmission line. To do that, we'll go to elements and instead of placing the sub, we'll just go to again, microstrip line. Select line from here. And if you'll scroll down, you'll find MLEF. So if you'll check the description of that, this is an open microstrip line with an end effect. So this is a stub which we are going to place it here. I'm just going to connect it. And as you can see, the substrate for this stub transmission line is uh, sub one. This is the same substrate which we have created a couple of minutes ago. And now the width of the transmission line will be same as the 50 ohm width, which we have calculated using the transmission line tool. Line of the substrate, we'll just make it another variable. Let's make it L stub. I will copy paste here. So this is another tunable parameter, which we are going to tune. For now, I'm just placing the value here, which is the exact value we want to make it time efficient. Let's make it 19.5. Now we are going to run the simulation again and see if it is matched to 50 ohm or not. So we'll run the analysis. And as you can see, the imaginary part is almost zero and it is on the line, all right? So the impedance is 50 ohm. Now, how this you have to do from scratch, because I got these values L stub and L line from the tuning. So you can just create the tunable parameter for yourself. We'll just click on this tune tool, select these two variables, go back to your plot and click on this tuner. Here you can see the lowest value is set to 9.75. Maximum value is set to, let's say 39, right? So you can just, yeah, check it. And as you can see, it's moving. Right. Similarly, you can move it in this direction. All right. So as you can see on this particular value only, you can able to place it correctly at the center line. All right. So yeah, you can just go through with this and play along with these tunable parameters and see if you can able to match it to 50 ohm or not. All right. So this is what I did. And from that, I got these values 19.5 and 16.85. So if I'll just enter here, it is correctly matched, all right? So our matching circuit is ready. Next, we are just going to create an independent matching circuit, which we can use it as a sub circuit when we'll be creating the mixer connection, all right? At later stage, when we'll be creating the mixer circuit, we'll be using all these schematic which we have created, all right? So to do that, I'm just going to create a new schematic 
and let's name it RF match network and click on create button. We'll just copy our matching circuit here. So I'll just copy it, control C, go back to RF match network, control V, and we'll just delete this diode circuit block. There we go. So this is our independent matching circuit, which we can use as a sub circuit, right? Because it's a two port network. In the next step, we are going to design a RF LO isolation circuit. So there are different type of isolator circuit or network or structure are possible. So we can use to isolate two input ports. But in this case, we are simply going to use power combiner structure as an RF LO isolator. So first we'll just create a new schematic, go to your project panel, right click on schematic, click on new schematic. We are going to name it RF LO isolator and click on create button. Then we'll go back to elements. From elements, we have to go to microstrip line. Here, instead of selecting the line, we'll select power divider. And here we have this Wilkinson power splitter and divider, we'll just select this W I L K E one we we'll just drag and drop, rotate it like this. Now to edit the parameters, the width of this Wilkinson divider will be 50 ohm. So we'll make it W 50. This is the branch length. So we'll just make it W B. We'll later assign the parameters to it. Length will be, we call it quad length. So we'll just name another parameter here L quad. R will be 100 and subset will be sub 1. Next, we are going to define all the equations or the values to these variables. So W50, as we have calculated, it was 2.38. Copy and paste. WB will be 1.34. You can simply calculate that based on the impedance of 15 root 2. All right. So you can just go back to your tool, enter the, the value of impedance 50 root 2 and based on that the width will come out 1.34 and L quad will be lambda by 4. So we'll just copy paste here. Just name it L quad and its value will be 14.8. Right. So this is the parameter which we need to tune. So I'm just putting a rough value here and this will be WB. So we have entered all these parameters next we are going to add ports so port will be so this will be first port and i just copy paste this one this is second port okay don't go with these well these uh numbers here all right i'm assigning just ports based on the rf lo and rf plus lo parameters so this will be our rf input the port one so i'll double click here and make this id to rf Double click here. This will be our LO input and the output will be RF plus LO. So let's make it RF plus LO and click on OK button. Uh, before going further, I just want to arrange these ports parameters a bit. So there will be no overlap and we can clearly see things. All right. Next, we are going to plot the response and tune the L quad. So to do that, we are going to create the new plot. But before that, I'm just going to add the frequency sweep on that. So we'll go to project, right click here, go back to options here. Make sure you have unchecked this use project defaults. This will be a sweep and start frequency will be three gigahertz. Stop will be, let's say 5.5 gigahertz and step size will be 0.05 gigahertz. We'll apply and we can see there are 51 points we are going to simulate and click on OK button. Next, we are going to add the graph. We just click on this add new graph button. Let's name it as parameter of RFLO. And this time this will be a rectangular plot. Click on create button, right click, add new measurement. Uh, measurement will be same, port as parameters. From here, we have to select the RFLO isolator this time. And uh, so we are going to simulate for S21. So two port and this will be port two. Make sure the amplitude will be in dB and click on add. If you want, you can also simulate for S11, but that's not required. And we'll just close it. Next, we are going to run the analysis. And as you can see, there is this isolation of more than 50 dB between the port 1 and 2, but it is coming at certain frequency. So I'm just going to add a marker here. And it is at 3.552 megahertz. But in our case, we want this at 3.75 gigahertz. If we we'll go back to our design nodes, so the LO frequency is 3.75 gigahertz, and we want the isolation between these two ports at that frequency. 
So then that means we have to tune the parameter. So we'll go to our RF LO isolator circuit and we have to tune the L quad. So we'll just select this, go back to plot, open the tuner and I'm just going to remove other tuners. So we'll just uncheck from here and keep the quad. So from the tuning parameters, the quad length, which is coming close to 13.8. So we'll just, if we'll just go below, you can see it's moving in that direction. That is what we want. And at 13.8, the frequency will be pretty much, if I just add another marker to this point. So as you can see, this is approx 3.8 gigahertz. All right, you can just tune it further, but again, that's a uh, time taking and you can just uh, increase the value up to some certain decimal and uh, it will be fully matched, right? So we want this notch ideally at 3.75 gigahertz, which is here, right? And uh, the isolation between port one and port two at this frequency is approx 50 dB, right? So we'll just close it. So that's it for the isolation circuit. Next, we are going to add everything together to create the mixer circuit for simulation. Next, we are going to create the mixer circuit. To do that, we'll again go back to our project panel, right click and create new schematic. I'm just going to name it mixer and click on create button. Now here, if you recall that our mixer circuit consists of three block RFLO isolator, matching network and diode biasing circuit. And all the three blocks we have created here, right? So we'll just add our first sub circuit, which will be RFLO isolator. So we'll just place it here. I'm just going to rotate it. So here we have this RF, LO and RF, LO output. This will go to a matching network. So we'll place another sub circuit that will be our matching circuit. All right. So make sure you are using the uh, independent matching circuit that we have created without diode, right? We just place it here. And next we are going to add the diode bias sub circuit. So we'll cl click on diode biasing and click on Okay, here we go. So this is our mixer circuit. I'm just going to connect all these ports. In the next step, we are going to add input and output ports to this mixer circuit. To do that, we'll again go back to elements. From elements, we'll go to ports and select harmonic balance ports. From the harmonic balance port, I'm going to add the one tone HB source, right? So we'll just place it on. Uh, so first port I'm going to assign to RF. So just rotate it. All right. Then I'm going to add the output port, which will be port number two. And then I'm going to add, just copy this, place another harmonic balance port at the LO. That will be our port three. Next, we are going to configure the parameters of these ports. But before that, I'm just going to set the frequency of the project. So let's go back to the schematic right click option. Uh, we are going to run the simulation for a single point frequency, which is an input frequency of RF signal, which is 4.25 gigahertz and click on OK button. So that will be the frequency of this RF port. Now to set the frequency of the LO port, we have to double click on this and go to port parameter. From here, let's say second tone and click on OK. Now, as you can see, we are getting the frequency option here. Uh, it is in megahertz. And the LO frequency is 3.75 gigahertz. So it will be 3750 megahertz. And the LO power, uh, I'm just going to make it a variable. So let's make it PLO, which we are going to tune when we'll see the spectrum or when we plot for spectrum. We'll just tune the power LO and see what is happening at the amplitude of the signal. And similarly, we are going to define this variable here. For now, I'm just going to make it 0 dBm. So P underscore LO will be 0. All right. So that's pretty much for this video. In the next video, we are going to simulate this and see the spectrum of this mixer output. And later we'll optimize that spectrum by changing the PLO power and adding some bandpass filter to remove all the extra frequencies, which is not required, right? So that we'll discuss in next video. For more tutorials, visit us at resources.emaeda.com and don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel.